Welcome, my friends. This is Maniacal Incorporated. The greatest court in the world is under siege, and thousands of troops from throughout Europe are about to descend and do battle. Uh, 6,000 troops from Iceland are just off the coast of northern Scotland. Uh, 7,000 Aragonese forces are just about to set sail. At the end of the last episode, I showed that we had 25,000 troops. I have broken the bank in terms of alliances. I have called in everyone, including... Where is he? The Duke of Lothian, who is a member of our dynasty. So I've called him in uh, using the dynasty hook. The problem is it's going to be a while before we have numbers that can equal the 15,000 or so that our enemies are putting together in this region. So there's 4,000 marching down to join up here. Uh, we're not going to be able to attack immediately, probably until Aragon gets its forces up. And then, of course, we have that disembark penalty to deal with. It's highly likely that we are going to see the fall of Downpatrick for the first time since the 500s. When Enail forces uh, crossed across to seize the body of St. Patrick. We are about to see a cataclysmic event. We've had Ola sieged before, especially by Iceland. But never, not since, uh, the wars over the body of St. Patrick, not since then has so much been at risk. We're going to see some uh, prisoners ransomed out uh, for no money. And we're going to see some alliances kick in. As the High King of Ireland, his health is poor. He is 72 years of age. Can he see off this last great challenge? Four thousand troops have managed to hit our armies that we were trying to pull back. It's entirely possible that if we do go across... Um, I don't know if we'll be able to hit them in time. Have they lifted the siege? They haven't. They've managed to succeed in the siege. Our Jester has been captured. Uh, those forces are probably going to uh, try and come up. They've taken uh, St. Joseph's Jaw. I imagine a couple of artifacts are going to be lost. Or it's been damaged by a member of the family. So there you go. We have lost the Siege of Downpatrick. I think we're going to keep the troops maybe here. Now we're going to see how they, uh, what they actually do. We have a couple of disembark penalties that we want to get rid of. Uh, we have called in the King of Burgundy. He's now calling us into one of his wars. We'll accept, but um, we're not going to be we're not going to be able to do anything about that. We're we're kind of busy. We're kind of busy. And poor Ron Ku's armies have suffered a second defeat, and that is a bit of a disaster. The Aragonese forces, what a place for them to land. Oh, I don't know if this is a good idea or not. There's 12,000 forces in there. We're going to get our men in. I don't think this is a good idea. Aragon, if you've cost me this war, I don't know what I'm going to say to you. This is an absolutely chaotic battle. Aragon allowed itself to be caught with 10,000 troops wandering around. We're being told about deviancy in the court. Uh, Tamer, we really don't have a huge amount of time to deal with this. Uh, Eamon, our executioner, I imagine has been uh, slain in battle. Aragon, you incompetent morons. I don't know if this will do anything for us, but here is Goitna. I don't think it'll take him out, but we're gonna we're gonna blackmail him. We have a hundred percent chance to uh, blackmail him. 
Uh, Ron Koo's army, and there's poor Ron Koo, he'd rather be fighting against us. I'm going to send him across and begin sieging this area to see if it'll at least maybe distract them a small bit. If we check how the, uh, the forces are looking at the moment, it's just getting them all to the one area and not having Aragon mess up. Aragon's incompetence is actually staggering at the best of times. Uh, we could begin sieging down places in this region. There was the first battle in Slemish. Uh, so that was Ronku's army, which just has a, a single unit in it, and this is the one again. Oh, Aragon. There's Robertuck. I recognize more people on the, the enemy side than my own side. For real, how could you do this? Azur has been taken uh, captive. We 28 knights to their 37. We just weren't able to get all our forces together. We did not want to be going into that battle. Uh, there was somebody killed by Gunnar. And Domengarth, who has remained loyal to us. Do we see our son Patrick in there anywhere? Uh, as far as I know, he is in the armies somewhere. There he is. He's up near the top. That's not where we want him to be. But these are the challenges that beset the kingdom at this point in time. Uh, we have indeed actually managed to push Goitna out of that war by blackmailing him. Uh, we're seeing a couple of other battles break out. Munster has... Um, uh, that was Goitna's army. Uh, here's one of our prisoners that we took there uh, a while back. I'm trying to see where our main forces are now. They've actually headed down to... Well, I won't say our main forces. I don't know if these are our main forces or not. We might... Do you know what? While we're down here, we might send them all across in this direction and cause some trouble. Alok is under siege. We'll see if we have any more forces that we can raise. It's probably only going to be a couple hundred knights. Uh, Munster is heading off around the coast. It's uh, knocked out of this war. There's Aragon and it's 7,000. Now we might very well just try to uh, to siege a couple of areas. Uh, wouldn't you know it, the only ones in the court. Here's our... Look, he's single-handedly fought in two wars. So we'll, we'll leave him alone. Or two, uh, two battles. The only ones with uh, siege weaponry, as you'd expect, would be the... Uh, would be Iceland. Our nephew has died. Uh, there's so much happening at this stage. So Aquitaine, the king of Aquitaine has died. Uh, Louis, Louis Mac Louis Mac Louis. That was Louis Mac Louis Mac Louis, wasn't it? So there's Louis. There's his father Louis, and there's his grandfather Louis. So a new regime has come to power in Aquitaine. And here is the uh, so our alliance has expired with her because of Louis' death, from what I understand. Okay, okay. Well, it doesn't make a difference. She's been dragged into this war, so she's staying where she is. Uh, Dunanaul has been lost. I was wondering what he was saying there for a second. We're at 63% war score. I don't know what these devils need to do to, uh, to win, but it looks like they're coming out to sea. Now, this could be fantastic. Nope, they're going for Dublin. I don't think they're entirely sure what they want to do. We have taken some area. We've taken the Duke's daughter. There's going to be... Oh, boys, there's going to be a spate of executions when uh, when this day is done. I Do I want to do that? No, I don't, because then we're going to get some armies moving. So let's see if we can do this. If I just move you, will the rest of the guys stay where they are? Good. So they are sieging down the capital of the Holy Order. They might be a bit confused. They might be too sure what they do and don't want to do. A lifestyle learning perk, you say? Uh, more areas are getting sieged down. Radiant. The Radiant High King of Ireland. It's getting a bit hectic now at this stage. I'm not too sure where they are heading for. 
but if we can complete a few sieges down here, I'd be hoping that we can knock off some support and also uh, knocking off some support would be one major benefit or a war score and the other thing would be maybe to uh, to pull them down in this direction. The handy thing is that I think most of Scotland has actually rebelled. They don't have a huge amount of places they can go to actually attack. They are going for our granddaughter's land, if I am correct. They're still wandering around, utterly confused. They didn't want to leave from Dublin. They wanted to leave from somewhere better. Uh, we've managed to siege down uh, Moel Brassel's capital, I think. I think, if I am correct, we have indeed. Now we're actually getting these sieges done fairly quickly. We do just want to keep an eye on what they're doing. Right, they're coming down in this direction. They're coming down in this direction. Are they going to try and lift a siege from somewhere? Uh, one of our vassals, the Countess of Angus, uh, wishes to give us 50 quid for the war effort. Thank you very much. Uh, uh. Uh, the oath is taken. The scribes record her pledge to serve the Kingdom of Ireland. And we can gain some... We could give out her and lose some... Um, some some stress she would gain the nickname the foreigner good effort isabel thank you for the money so as always mathers are rather confused they've just basically done a big circle they're back to dublin i don't know if they're actually going to stay there uh, we're going to complete a siege up here we're down to 16 war score uh, the loss of Dublin is going to be is going to be problematic. However, I'm wondering, do we want to come in this direction? Sure. We're going to complete the siege down here as well, and then we might very well look at actually sending the armies across. Uh, finally, this fool's education has been done. Your father is in a prison somewhere, so I was preparing you for the uh, for the priesthood or something like that. But you might end up being. Um, Taking over your father's uh, position as as jester. That other independence ward that we have no ability to take part in. That is going terribly. That is going very bad. In Burgundy, we did call him Burgundy. He really does need to go and get allies of his own at this stage. And we've a couple of different options. We could set sail for the south of Ireland. Uh, we could actually go in and just lift the siege of uh, Ulla. We're at one percent. And we see that Dublin has fallen. Now, what we don't want to do is try and lift that siege as they're heading in that direction. I don't want to land the forces again. So we might just keep them... Uh, where they are for a moment until we get that other siege completed. We're going to see where uh, where exactly they're going. Uh, poor Burgundy. Look, you desperately needed to go and get more alliances. You desperately, desperately, desperately needed more alliances. I think we will... Um, we'll land them in Leinster. Uh, we will continue sieging. That's absolutely fantastic. If all of you guys would come across with us, that would be absolutely tremendous. Uh, Galloway is under siege. Burgundy is not getting any help. Uh, everyone is just absolutely hammering in there. Our granddaughter, Nula, has been taken captive by who? That could be us. We're seeing enemy allies joining wars. Those troops have headed across to Galloway. 
Uh, once we get that siege lifted, I think what we will do now is bring our forces across. So we've managed to get the war score down significantly. If we can lift the siege of Dublin, or if we can lift the, uh, the war here in Dublin, and if we can have the forces that are arrayed against us, if we can have those come back and actually um, try and fight us when we have all of our forces together and we're not suffering any disembarkation penalties and Aragon isn't being foolish. I don't know, are they realizing that they've made some terrible mistakes? Some forces are coming out to sea. Uh, we were positive there for a second. Martha has come of age. Our granddaughter. Until we meet again, Martha. I was going to see if there were any alliances that we could form. But you know what, I think, I think we will just continue on as we are. Uh, the enemy forces... They really don't know what to do. I think we're seeing some men standing down. Uh, presumably the cost is beginning to hit them. We are sieging Oriel. Uh, we should get that finished shortly, and then we will be able to lift the siege of Ulla. I would hope that that would put us back into the positives. Ron Koo, the poor man, has died of old age. Our former marshal absolutely hated and despised us, but he was not in a position to, uh, to join the insurrection against us. If we look at the factions, why well, look at this, 47 plus 47. Uh, there is our granddaughter-in-law, there is Maria who absolutely hates us, there's Goitner. Uh, we're being told that something is happening in the court. Somebody's kneeling before a box, a royal lapse. The pageantry of the court continues day after day from dawn to dusk, Mwirin extemporizes on my greatness spouting platitudes and praises uh, near by a mayor joins in playing to the crowd grinning stupidly and expecting a sign of my favor for her antics a deep insistent desire to let the mask slip and tell these people my true feelings slowly builds there's no there's no mask Knowing at my mind, um, a lone bead of sweat trickles interminably down my brow. Mwirin notices my distance, inquiring, Are you all right, my lord? With almost genuine concern. My apologies, what were you saying? Forgive me, I have other business to attend to. We lose court grandeur. Very good. Uh, we lose less court grandeur. Do you know what? Considering that this court is technically occupied, it's not looking, it's not looking the worst. Um, it's not looking the worst. Have they taken anything? Oh, Dune is still there. That's the most important thing. So, yeah, there we go. Some techno dancing going on by Aragon. Our cupbearer has died. We have captured Oriel. We have captured Finton. Finton, your head will not be staying on your shoulders. Uh, we will send this force for Brefni, and we will send the uh, army that was commanded by Ron Ku. We don't have a single command. The best commander. To take command to lift the siege of Alach is the High King himself. Uh, we have lost that siege. Our granddaughter has been taken captive. Our gra our granddaughter in law. So they're going to continue to push into um, to Scotland. I don't. I won't say I don't care too much, but uh, I would like to give battle to them. We're beginning to see them coming across, and if they get across to this side, we will indeed swing the armies around and engage. Let's see what direction they go in. Two sieges have started in Bangor and in uh, Ulster. We're not seeing all of the forces follow after us. Mwiriduk was slain in battle. 
So Murdoch, of course, left our court recently. Well, now you could have you could have fought and died here in Ireland, but no, away off you went. What wars um, does Gerhardt find himself in? A liberty war in the Holy Roman Empire. Well, there you go. You could have fought and died in Ireland. So we're sending in uh, massive numbers under the command, possibly, of the High King. And we're in a much better position than we were the last time. Our opponents have suffered a good chan uh, chunk of uh, attrition from wandering around the place. And it could very well be the case that with this battle we might bring the whole thing to close enough to an end. Oh, these other fools. Now they are seeing the power of the High Kingship. Uh, Patrick, look at this. 22 prowess. He's the second highest ranking knight because many of our very uh, very good knights are on the opposition side. Uh, Gwent. The Lord of Gwent. Gwent has been, uh, has been an odd one. Was killed by Tostig. I don't think there were any more. I think there was maybe one more loss. Oh, there was a couple. Uh, Prince Patrick, in defense of the Kingdom of Ireland, managed to kill two enemy knights. And now it is us that is in the position to bring in 37 knights against our opponents. Uh, Iceland got in late. There was a couple of uh, units that had wandered as far as Sligo. And they were coming in fairly late. Uh, somebody on our side was killed by the mayor. Of Balia Ahafordia, an area that's been of uh, of problems to us in the past. Uh, we will dismiss that. I had sent my daughter to try and spy, actually on uh, Finton's court. We will bring her back to disrupt schemes. Uh, the armies didn't split as much as I wanted, so what I've done, I know that uh, oh they have, they have. These guys have uh, gone down in this direction. So, what's after happening? Uh, the war against our son that was lost. Look, there's a lot of these wars. We'll have to come back and check what's going on later on. These guys are going to need to try and get across to Scotland to, to join up. So we have basically parked half of our army in Ulla, sent the other half over to uh, lift the siege of Alloch. We're being told that, moved by my tribulations, Siobhan has offered me her counsel. Siobhan hates me. And on many occasions, uh, hoping to alleviate the burdens of my duties, her attentions have incurred the ire of Krahur. Siobhan cannot be trusted. This is merely a ploy to exploit you, my liege. Now, she's a powerful vassal with 1,900. You are a more powerful vassal with even more troops. And yeah, Krahur is generally who we're going to try and... Um, I'll take heed of your warning. Can the three of us not find common ground? 23% chance... No, it's not great. It's a diplomacy, um... Diplomacy. Krahur becomes my rival? Most certainly not something that I want. And... We will lose 20 dread and 42 stress. I will take heed of the warning, Krahur. Uh, we have that lifestyle perk as well. Defender of the faith. Uh, tyranny gain. Same faith opinion. I've never gotten all three trees. So it'll be, it'll be something else if we manage to do this with a man who was shoving up in years. Uh, Dublin is under siege. I think there is actually... Um, oh no, it's in Meath. I thought it was Meath's forces. So yeah, if we can, if we can uh, hit these two armies, we have one lifting the siege in uh, Alloc. Uh, the forces that we're sending down this direction should be more than enough. 10,000 forces just uh, slammed into an army there. Uh, nine knights against eight. You treacherous bastards. You gain dread, imprison every rebellious vassal and gain a title revocation reason against each of them. The Liberty faction is disbanded. 
its members cannot join factions for 10 years. Many of its members will be lucky to come out of this with their heads. Enforce the demands. That last great battle in Dublin that brought the war to an end. We lost one of our knights, Angus, who died from his wounds. But look, who achieved the most kills. Goitna, the Duke of Munster, who was part of that first great victory when Aragon went in awkwardly. And he and his rebellious friends shattered our forces split our armies well after we blackmailed him drove him out of the rebellion he was uh, very eager to make up for his mistakes once he realized that victory was impossible and that the high kingship with its unparalleled alliances would absolutely smash all that stood uh, in its way he switched over fairly lively uh, this will tell you how, how bad things have gotten. We have lost a lot of knights. We have lost a tremendous amount of knights. Uh, the fact that we are putting deviant poets into the... Uh, the army. Yeah, I suppose, look, poetic inspiration can be found in all sorts of places. We won't, we won't judge, we won't judge the artist. Well, isn't this an absolutely beautiful sight to behold? An entire Liberty faction imprisoned. There will be some executions. Not as many as I expected. A lot of these people have high opinion. It would be foolish, I think, to execute too many of them. But we most certainly will send a message. You can see that our armies are departing from Ireland. They are heading to back to Burgundy uh, to aid with the numerous wars that are going on in that direction. And before we begin any executions, we will finally usurp the title King of Scotland, a title which Cruhur had been promised from a very young age that one day his sons would hold after him, because of course he was betrothed to Bridget, who he eventually ended up executing. Scotland has been a rock that numerous branches of the family, or numerous generations of the family, have thrown themselves against. And now that we have brought this war to an end, now that we are in a position to uh, retrain the armies to bring those numbers up, we will usurp the title. We will try and get all the rest of the counties to, uh, to join. And we should hopefully be in a position to put down any rebellions that might break out. I'd like to say, isn't it a glorious sight, but dear God, that is hideous. A Lothian and Moray will not join. It's entirely possible that we might have to force them to do so. I'm particularly disappointed with Lothian, a member of the uh, the family, the, the Welsh uh, dynasty. So there is his father. So was it a matrilineal marriage? I'm not too sure why that was organized, but there's Crondmoil, who we uh, granted a uh, Dehyber to. So there is his son. I'm in the wrong direction. There is his son, Moel Barassel, who rebelled against us and is now in prison, thanks to Lothian's efforts. So unfortunately, Lothian um, isn't inclined to join at the moment. But there we go, Crahur. At 75 years of age, King of Ireland, King of Wales, King of Alba. And like I said, we will 
We'll try and clear up those borders, but... For one life, he has not done too shabby. I'm just looking through some of the things that we have added to our court. Here is a fine axe that was taken by Krahur, granted to Fareel, taken by Krahur from Fareel. I expected we'd be executing him. I don't think we will be. I think Fareel is safe. Do you know what? We might even give him back the axe. And I was wondering if we'd be in a position to claim this, but we don't need to. I don't know who we managed to seize it off of, but we do indeed have the Stone of Schoon. I'm not too sure what else we've inherited. Uh, the Dunkeld House Banner. I suppose, yeah, we've seized pretty much everything that they had in the court. Um, it would be fantastic if we could replace our wife's chair with the throne of Connacht, but for now, for now, Krahur will sit on the Stone of Schoon. Prestige, 0 0.25, Renown. Uh, minute Arms Maintenance goes down, Court Grandeur Bonus goes up, Spearman Maintenance. And Gaelic and Scott's opinion, so this would be very beneficial to him in ruling over his new domain. And with peace reigning through the kingdom, I think it would only make sense that Crahur, King of Ireland, King of Wales, King of Alba, would hold a court. What important matters will be brought to the new king? My grandson, Tranka, stands before me, a hopeful expression on his face. My lord, I couldn't help but notice that, in recent times, you have gotten more crowns. Of course, you have been administering the finances, egregiously. But perhaps you might find some use for some extra gold. I'm willing to buy a minor settlement off your hands in exchange for a generous sum of gold would be acceptable. So we could sell him a, a barony for 250. Uh, absolutely. I need to get rid of these things. So Trenka is our grandson. Uh, Trupance, so he's not going to inherit anything. Absolutely. If you have 250 gold to give me, you're more than welcome. My steward, Liaura, stands before me, a concerned expression on his face. My lord, I come on behalf of my granddaughter, uh, Gail Guess. She was ignobly, ignobly imprisoned by our nephew for trivial and preposterous reasons. My heart bleeds for the miserable conditions which my poor granddaughter must endure. Uh, please, show her mercy and order her to be released. Uh, off with the head, off with the problem. So she's killed by Laura. And then Laura loses opinion of us. Uh, so absolutely, she must be set free. We gain a weak hook on him. And the Duke that's in prison, he loses 30 opinion. He's going to survive because he has positive opinion of us. If that goes negative... He's losing his head, so he had better be, um, he had better be careful. Let her free. I am faced with Bridget Nick Moyle Brassel's sad eyes, which grow larger and more pitiful as her mother, Princess Ronalda, gently ushers her uh, towards the throne. High King, she laments. The girl has been at Muel Brassel's court with no one to watch over her since the arrest of her dear papa. Who is your dear papa? Ah, yes, your dear papa. So we could raise the girl ourselves. My hands are full, but I'll find her a home. And she becomes our wife's ward. Unfortunate, but not the crown's problem again 
Moel Brassel, you'd want to watch. And we gain 10 court grandeur. Do you know what? Sure. There is not a hope that this child will... Uh, that we will see out her education. But we will raise the girl ourselves. We're looking into his face. Our useless good-for-nothing marshal, who's probably caused a lot of these problems, by um, insisting that he get that marshal position. There is Baron Trenka. There's a very high intrigue person that uh, that was hired to become a court spy, but never did, because that position went to Skahach. As the last petitioner departs, various courtiers follow them out of the room. My business here is done. As always, we are being hit with some penalties about our holdings. We've managed to give one of them away to a distant member of the family. Uh, Trenka, our grandson. Distant, should we denote him? Here's Gilchrist, Loden, married to our daughter, uh, Princess Mwirin. We can't give her any land. But if we give Gilchrist something on his death, it will pass to uh, his son, Kostruk. So I think I'm going to give him this region. So Gari will remain with us and it will pass to Patrick uh, on our death. So we will grant him that county, which has been one of the ones that's been in our possession for the longest. This was, uh, we got this one from Bridget. But uh, Gary, of course, would be the uh, the much more important, uh, effective capital of Scotland. So that takes care of that penalty anyway. We still have too many duchies. Uh, he's no longer our court tutor. Mwerin is no longer our antiquarian. But uh, we have secured uh, land for our descendants. We do have a lot of court positions in the new United Courts of Ireland, Scotland, yeah, most of Scotland, and Wales to sort out. Considering that we trained him, uh, Joffrey, we will put him in as our new court tutor. Uh, he was also good for the position of antiquarian. I don't want to give him too many positions. Uh, Gormul, I remember, was causing problems, so we might hold off on antiquarian for a while. Uh, food taster. The Mongarth, who performed very well in that, in uh, putting down that rebellion. We have some important positions. Master of the Horse, Goitna, you devil. Well, he's already Master of the Hunt. There is Earl Gilchrist. Uh, who else do we have? There is Ron Coo's daughter. She hates us. She's average. I don't know if this was a position that your father held. I think it actually is. So I think it's only fitting that we would give you that position. It might it might make you hate us a tiny bit less. Uh, Cupbearer. We won't give it to... Oh, we could give it to Murduk. I don't know if it, if it increases the chances that they'll be killed. But here is our knight. Uh, Crusader. Who we've gang-pressed into the army. And who was the only member, the only knight, uh, fighting in two um, battles that they were engaged in. So they, they put in tremendous work. Court Jester. Mwerduk. I think before we go doing too much more, we're going to need to start trying to, uh, to release pres uh, people. Uh, here is a knight in... Uh, Scotland. I think I um, I forced him to join shortly before this battle began. I don't know where this guy came from. I think I married him out randomly. I did. I married this person who was in our court uh, to Setna randomly at the start of the episode just because, or I think it was the last episode, just because he had high marshal. I didn't even focus on it. And he turned out to be the commander of most of our victories. So do you know what? Even though he's average, I am going to make him our personal champion. 
and we'll just see about bodyguards but uh, what we're going to have to do is we're going to need to start uh, bringing people back from the enemy court there's a lot of them there we've nobody for the position of court executioner unfortunately and uh, nobody for artificer 15 prisoners i've started ransoming some of them out I would like if we could do a prison swap. Whose prison are you in? I gave you that title, you divil. Can I not just scream at him? Oh dear God, are we still focusing on this? This is at least the third or fourth time. She's 29 now. It doesn't make a difference. The alliance has already been made. Uh, she's had two children. Uh, one who will inherit the kingdom of Burgundy. I don't know what way it's going to go. Will the titles split again? When, um, when his mother dies and he gains Aragon. Uh, will, it, uh, will it be divided between the two of them? I suppose if we're that paranoid... One of our knights is absolutely furious that we didn't appoint him as the uh, court antiquarian. We could make him our jester, but we're actually trying to ransom out our jester at the moment. We'll tell him to come off it and stop. Stop being a baby. Looking here at the lengthy list of prisoners that we have. Uh, some of them can't be ransomed out for anything. Finton. Plus 56, he's a member of the family. I granted you this title. Your sister is in his prison. I don't think we can ransom her out. Uh, we can. Hmm. For a hundred... We could give him a favour. The favour might very well be the fact that he gets to keep his head. I'll grant him a favour. And I think he might try and use it to get back his position as steward. But uh, back to you. Your opinion is high. He will ransom you out. There's that hundred. For real... I don't know what to say to you. Uh, we're not going to execute a pregnant prisoner. Now we're getting into the questionable ones. This woman's support, mm, I suppose she is a pilgrim. Uh, her support for us has turned positive. She won't give us money though. We'll leave you there for another while. We'll leave you to stew. Well, Brassel. Again, he's a member of the family. HB3. The son of one of the great knights of the kingdom. You have been nothing but a pain in the arse for decades. You know the story. We're told that there is nothing our wife can hide from us. 60% chance that we succeed. I don't know why we keep getting this over and over and over again. Um, the... What is he? Our nephew, Ingwined, has accepted that hook. He has released our granddaughter. I think we'll probably ransom him out. I was thinking he'd be most certainly want to be executed. But HB3, I know, I know, I know. HB3 was a tremendous disappointment to us. Uh, he was constantly, constantly, constantly leading rebellions. Or at least he was uh, high ranked in those uh, independence factions. And it's a, a terrible pity considering our father put his father in Brefne. Uh, it's come to my attention. That one of the local commoners, or that some of the local commoners, are moving to Edinburgh. So here is the King of Lothian, or the petty King of Lothian. 
and we are attempting to sway him. Because, do you know what? We mightn't even need to do this. Uh, he's minus two from being swayed. So yeah, sure, we'll pay 90 quid to, uh, to push that on. It actually looks like Murray and Lothian will both uh, accept uh, vassalization pretty soon. My wife spends a significant amount of time traveling the realm with her honor guard. We could get some prestige. It's going to take a while. Uh, it's going to take a while. Or we could gain some dread. Uh, we have a lot of vassals that we need to keep in line, so we will absolutely take those dread uh, benefits. We can see the Irish forces arriving. We're going to head for, of all places, decades too late. We're heading for Bar. Now here is somebody who hates us. Siobhan. Nick Ronku. They're going to have... Uh, I thought it was going to be members of... Maybe she had... I'm not too sure how it's... Oh, it's probably a matrilineal marriage. I was totally confused. A matrilineal marriage to... Elnf Kelech. Elnf Kelech. Never, never seen that name before. One of Laura's sons. I'm not too sure. Is he going to inherit something? No, he's not. Anyway. Um, sure in at once. She's 50 quid for us. A generous gift. Thank you very much. And look at this. After all the service that the poor man has given. Crahur, the Duke of Leinster, has died. He has been succeeded by his son, Henri. If I am correct, Crahur's father uh, served as diplomat before him. It does not look like we will be having a repeat of that. Unless Fergal is any good. No. No. So if we look at our court positions, there's Laura. Who's not great. You know what? Um, Henri, we will appoint you as our uh, steward. And for Chancellor, do we want a... We'll stick Laura in there, actually, just to, to make up for the fact that we fired him. Um, I think he's happier that he's in there now. Krahur... Krahur was an odd one. Krahur was an odd one. We've seen there that we've had a lot of prisoners released. And we pretty much now only have two. This woman who is... It's only this pilgrim trait that's getting you out of here. Now. This duke. He's flat broke. We can't ransom him. We can get a weak hook, which will prevent us from losing any dread. Uh, I don't know if the hook and the favor would cancel. That would be fantastic. Uh, we could let him out for nothing. We could just release him. Uh, or we could get him to renounce his claims. Now, that would drop his opinion. We could, of course, banish him, take hooks, or uh, gain a weak hook, get him to take vows. We could execute him, but again, he's not a direct member of the family. The, the opinion isn't the worst. I would hope that he has learned a valuable lesson. Nephew, we will release you. Make the mostian of this opportunity we are giving you. I think it's fair to say that Krahur is going to spend the rest of his life fighting uh, wars in Burgundy. I think this is where we're going to be now for the rest of our lives, fighting these wars. Uh, there's another war for... Uh, Geneva, we're going to siege down Bar and do something else that our father could not do. Oh wait, no, we're a county, we're a county south. This is Bar, but this is, this is Bar Bar. So Bar, this is Bar and this is Bar. I think that's the Bar that we wanted. Yeah. Then how is this Bar? Here's the Duke of Bar. 
but here's actual bar. Lads, I think we're in the wrong bar. While our stress is low, we're going to call some knights to the kingdom. Uh, we have won a siege and gained 51% war score. 60% war score. I don't really know where we can go with these uh, these troops. Like I said, we're just going to be here forever. It's entirely possible that if we can win these two sieges, then we are finished with uh, with one of these wars, uh, which has actually just dropped to uh, to fifty five. Now we could take these two forces and march them. This is a hostile army or an army we're attacking. Our units aren't of great quality, so I don't want to uh, to send them in. Uh, maybe without this three uh, k army, so we might we might wait. That's a hundred percent war score. Second siege completed. We will have all three armies converge on Augsburg. Uh, they are heading for Bern, and you know what? We might do the same. Uh, so we've won one war. We won't do the same because they have just surrendered. Well, we will. If we can find the army with the mangonels, we will send them up to burn. Uh, Krundmoyle has gained opinion. We could, of course, offer him a lesser contract. I think we go for low feudal obligations. Do you know what? We will. Because we could be messing around with this for the rest of our lives and never achieve anything. I suppose it was to be expected. Our nephew, who we released, he has called in that favour. He has installed himself as our new steward. He is indeed the highest ranking steward in the kingdom. As you demand. Uh, we've also conceded an execution reason on him. We have an acceptance of vassalization from Moray. And we have an acceptance of vassalization from Lothian. Bar, uh, Orkney. We now have complete control of the kingdoms of Ireland, Scotland and Wales. Uh, we could take Orkney just to, uh, just to clear things up. I'm wondering, do we now accidentally have land? We don't, so... Poor Owl. Farquhar. Dunkeld has been pushed completely out of Scotland. And the whole region now belongs to one single Irish ruler. And it will be divided uh, between his sons. Patrick will take Ireland and Scotland. And Wales will go to Mwerduk. Uh, we're being told there's a raid. I imagine it's Iceland. And I imagine that they will leave. Now that uh, Lothian has come under uh, Irish control. And yeah, now poor old Iceland is going to have to find other parts of the world to raid. We're seeing 11,000 forces heading up towards Bern. Uh, they are retreating back to Bern. So they've suffered a bit of a wallop. I don't know, are they actually going to go into the region? They are indeed. And they will continue past the region. A bit more serious, however, is the 7,000 or so forces that we are seeing. And if they were to hit us, we would be in a bit of trouble. If we could take them on, though, it would sort out a lot of this mess. I'm not too sure who they are or aren't attacking. Uh, so we'll bring our own forces in just to uh, to protect the siege troops. We are indeed being raided by Iceland. Oh, I think they were, they were pushed in, so they were defeated by uh, the forces of Aragon and pushed in in that direction. It'd be interesting to see if Aragon would try and uh, conquer England. There's been a, a changeover. 
in the rule in England, and it really is telling you something that uh, that we haven't been focusing on this for a while. We just don't care anymore. Uh, England is no longer of any interest to us. They are no threat to us, not with the forces that we can put together. And really, it's just uh, if we could bring these wars in uh, Burgundy to an end and actually concentrate maybe on developing the kingdoms a bit. And we are in a position to unlock a lifestyle learning perk. I'm just trying to select this army. I don't know. We have indeed Moel Brassel recently rebelled against us. We are in a position uh, to deploy him as a military engineer. So look at this for a turnaround. He's left our prisons. He's been uh, sent to Burgundy to gain back our favor. And for the first time ever, I have had a character finish off an entire tree. You gain the trait Theologian by an entire tree. I mean an entire lifestyle tab. Uh, theologian. We'll give him monthly piety, yes, as we work towards a religious... Oh, we're already religious icon. We are getting that health boost, but what do we do now? His learning's at 35. Uh, we could switch him to Intrigue, we could switch him to Stewardship. Uh, demand payment for hooks. He does have a couple. We could get him back to Marshall and finish off going for the Household Guard. We could get him for Diplomacy, go down the August Tree. I think that is exactly what he would do. It's going to take away that, uh, that slight... It doesn't really have any impact because we were poor and we're still poor. I don't think it's going to have any dramatic uh, impact on his on his health, and of course, uh, he's now into 77 years of age, heading for 78. Heading for 80. I don't even know who we're fighting anymore. We've managed to siege the capital of some region. I don't actually know which of the two wars that impacted, but we're predominantly just uh, wandering around sieging places. Uh, here is another siege commander in charge of this army, a military engineer, so I recruited him out of our prisons from that last war, from that insurgency against us. It never stops, does it, Krahur? It never stops. There's always a war to be fought. Our... He's our son-in-law, isn't he? Is after getting um, he's after getting himself a nice chunk of money, uh, two hundred and eighty-three gold. It'd be interesting to outlive his mother, and see what uh, Europe would look like with Burgundy and Aragon belonging to a single king. Here is Emer the Impaler, who we released. She's not bringing anything. She's not bringing anything. Hmm. Another region has been taken. Uh, one of those two wars that we were in has come to an end. We know that because we got a pop-up that said that the king got 283 gold. Uh, I was thinking about marching on... I think Ancona was at war with... Um, we were at war with them for a while. And that would have been nice to have seen that side of the world, to have wandered off in that direction and seen what was going on over there. That's another siege, 100% war score. And we assist with another victory. He gains 20 dread. So be it. Burgundy really had want to do something. Burgundy really had want to do something about alliances. They are depending literally just on us and I'm sick of it and Martha our sister has died of old age at 65 years of age she was married to Mothgamoyne 
I don't know if that's one we organized. I'm not going to lie, I don't remember a sister Martha. I'm not going to lie. I didn't realize that uh, men had not joined. Here is the petty king of men, Quillen. He's of the same house as our uh, nephew. I don't think he's related to us. And we're going to give him a fine warhammer of pain. We have a lot of items in the court that um, that I might give out to people. Oh yeah, that fine battle axe. We will we'll give this to him. And I'll see about beginning a process of swaying him. I don't think we really need to. We gave the fine battle axe to Fareel when we made him a count. And then he fought a war against us. We're going to give it to our son-in-law, Gilchrist, another knight. I think it would be I think it would be better off with you. The High King is up and out of his chair because Liaura wants to have a word. He approaches me during a brief lull while attending Court Mathers and gestures to a less populated spot in the room. Yeah. Uh, he's concerned about the capital. While holding a meeting in one of the rooms, we all noticed a horrific smell. It must have come from the latrines a floor above. I implore you to consider paying to fix the neglected parts of the building. So, lose 185 and he gains 10 opinion. Come on, you can't get better than that. Uh, let my steward handle the matter. Or just plug the hole in the floor. And we get a smelly court. I don't think the High King could leave a smelly court behind him. Especially with minus 5% uh, dread loss. 185 gold to fix the jacks. Oh lads, you're breaking me. We will indeed begin a sway scheme against the uh, King of Man. We've got him up to zero. Uh, so he won't positively or negatively accept or reject an offer of vassalization. Oh, God. I unfortunately made the decision to, uh, to stand down the army, or stand down half the army, because we saw they only had 2,000. Uh, but uh, Prince Henry II of France is coming in. Actually, lots of people in France are coming in. They're now up to 10,000. I'm not too sure if um, if he's in a position to uh, to win this war with the alliances that he has at the moment. The handy thing from our point of view, however, is that we don't have the furthest distance to travel. We're going to head for Normandy. Uh, siege some regions here. Yeah, look, we'll we'll just siege some areas. Burgundy's defeat there has pretty much um, already guaranteed the loss of this war. And as our forces set foot in Europe again, we're told that an alliance has come to an end with. Turinga, I think that was organized possibly by our father or maybe by uh, Krahur in the very earliest days of his rule, but more importantly, Laura has died of old age at 67. And we're now in a position to appoint a new chancellor, so he had served, I think, as steward uh, for a while. Uh, do we have any strong vassals that want positions? No. So it looks like uh, Corbin. Laura's son will become the uh, new Chancellor. We have seized control. We're going to march in to the capital. We're going to lose 200 men. Uh, we could have probably, maybe if we'd taken this area first of all. Because I think we've only just taken a, a single county in the region. Uh, downcast Lashes. The High King is going to gain stress at 79 years of age for carrying on with a 51-year-old. 
everyone will know about the um, sinful thoughts. No, my heart remains pure. We will gain 50 piety. We badly need it. Uh, how's that prestige looking? That's going to take a while. And that's going to take a while. I was getting ready to bring this playthrough to an end. I had said, if the High King makes it to 80 years of age, I'm just going to call it there. And let him sail into history. The High King will turn 80 on the 23rd of October. And I think he will turn 80. But uh, we are now in a position to begin making preparations for the end. And I think the High King can be pretty content with how everything stands at the moment. Krahur will be dead within a year. Our sister Dunla has died. What I do like is the fact that we're not gaining any stress. He really doesn't care. The only thing that I've done, the only preparations that I've had to make, are to marry out our court tutor. Just to marry him out. There's a, a genius. We have two unmarried grandchildren. They're still in their late teens, so I don't see the reason that we would um, that we would marry them out. I think we'll send these guys down in this direction. Uh, it would be fantastic to bring this war to an end and to have the the whole thing end at peace. I don't think it will. I also think we're losing war score faster than we're making it, but again, the High King really doesn't care. I wonder is the pop-up for the player, or does the High King realise that... Uh, does he actually realise himself that he's dying? And what are the great failures of the High King's regime? Other than the fact that he does not have three sons to pass his titles on to, are there any failures? Uh, somebody is plotting to kill our poet. He has secured everything that the family has dreamt of over the generations. Uh, he's managed to secure Scotland. He has managed to secure Wales. He has managed to solidify its borders. Maybe in his old age he has allowed the, the alliances to um, to drift a bit. We could put together 21,000 troops at the moment. There was a stage when he could put together 42,000 soldiers. It can be difficult. Once upon a time, the great dream that we had was to involve ourselves in the affairs of the continent. It can be difficult when you have so many uh, powers changing rapidly. Have we seen three uh, violent seizures of power in France, I think? Somebody has been hosting. Our new Chancellor. I am nothing less than honoured. To serve as your vassal. Oh, somebody's... Somebody's tune is changing. Somebody's tune is changing. Isn't this fantastic to see this in the final days of our life? Again, vassals who cannot join factions. I am blessed to have such grateful traitors. Possibly the heavy-handed nature with which the High King had to intervene in Scotland. Maybe that's something he'd be disappointed with. I think he would have rathered to have been in a position to have just um, pushed it off onto... Not pushed it off, but to have had somebody else uh, take control of Scotland. But, um, again, like I said, you had the chaos that was caused by having a young child on the throne. We have a misunderstanding. Quillen... I'm trying to sway so many people now that I'm I'm totally confused. Quillen has, if I am correct, uh, no, he has not. So we are trying to sway him. It's all been a misunderstanding, and maybe, 
maybe that might be our great failure, is to bring the Isle of Man into the Kingdom of Scotland. And I said it'd be great to outlive her and to see what actually happens. We have outlived. The Queen of Aragon died of old age. And here now is her son. Am I correct in saying the King of Aragon and the King of Burgundy? His forces have doubled. They're still not absolutely amazing. I really wish he'd go and form some better alliances, but soon he'll have alliances to... Uh, to two separate Irish kingdoms. This has now all become part of Burgundy. I suppose that's the main the main title. So that's going to be an interesting threat to uh, to things in Ireland. And of course, I forgot the High King has turned eighty. Uh, we missed it with uh, with all that's going on in this region. Uh, we can no longer sway the petty King of of Man. Uh, we already sent him a gift, so he won't accept. Uh, even if we give him low feudal contracts, he will not accept. And I don't think we're in a position to start swaying him. We're not. So there you go. Our great failure. Slap bang in the middle of the Irish Sea. The Isle of Man managed to escape our notice. We've managed to have the war score, and I was going to say another great failing of the High King is that he didn't manage to um, to gain any traits on the Diplomacy Lifestyle Tree. This is heartbreaking, that we now get the Sway Scheme power. Um, befriend Scheme. Do you know what we will? At 80 years of age... There's not a hope, because uh, it says that he'll be dead within a year, but it's not going to be, um... It's going to take three years. It's not a year on the dot. I think a year on the dot would put us in March. But, uh, like I've said before, it's not a year on the dot, but we can be expecting in the next couple of months that the High King will indeed pass away, and that he will not manage to succeed with that befriend scheme. And you know, what would it be? This wouldn't be a playthrough... If we weren't doubting the uh, heritage of another of our children, we will absolutely make sure. I should have gone down um, the Intrigue Learning Lifestyle perk. I don't know, has that taken her out of that? Uh, yeah, she could She could get into that faction. Oh, you can't hide anything from me. A niece of ours has ended up as a as a count somewhere in Aquitaine. I've no idea. We could have called her into uh, to various different things. Yeah, sure. Dunchuk's our daughter. Yeah, whatever. None of my children are my children. High King Crahur of Ireland rests in the arms of the Lord at 80 years of age. He died of old age. A charming man. He became famous for his elaborate feasts and grandiose bowls. That's what we'll remember him for. His bowls. High King Patrick ascends to the throne. A wise and learned man. Progress and innovation is expected under his rule. 53 years. I think there are kings who died who were uh, 54 years of age when they died. So he ruled for almost just as long as previous kings lived. Uh, died of old age. On the 13th of February, 1215. Uh, when he when he was telling me that I could go on another pilgrimage in 1211, I was saying, not, not a hope. He was the cultural head. He was dreaded. Too right he was. He was illustrious, a religious icon. He was a diplomat. Uh, finished the Parks Scholar, Whole of Body and Theologian. 
34 wars, 13 offensive, 20 defensive, 1 offensive Great Holy War. Patrick ascends to the throne already at 57 years of age. His health is fine. Uh, he, of course, would go down the learning route as well. And try and pick up the, uh, the whole of body traits. If we show the titles, so we have lost Wales. And everything else has been uh, kept very well together. The Kingdom of Ireland, the Kingdom of Scotland, and if I am correct, uh, he has only a single son to inherit. So Crahur will be gaining both of those titles. Uh, Crahur, I don't know if... Uh, if he's actually had any sons, so... A daughter of his is still in prison. Maybe that was one of our failings, forgetting to ransom her out. Um, Dunchuk. A granddaughter. Uh, Anya. Died of poor physique. And Ben Line, or Ban Line. So after all the work that we did in attempting to secure Patrick on the throne, Patrick has failed to have any male successors. His son, or his brother I should say, Muiraduk, 59 years of age, coming to power at 59. Now look at this for a, a lengthy rule that Krahur has had. Uh, Muiraduk, we basically disinherited him. One of the reasons we disinherited him, other than incompetency was because he had no sons. Well, he had the good idea to go off and have sons. And it's entirely possible that um, Patrick would either... I don't know what Patrick would do. Not alone does he have sons, but his heir is also... So here's Patrick. Here is his daughter. Uh, she is currently heir... To the High Kingship of Ireland, from what I can understand. Oh no, it's Krahur. No, I'm confusing myself. Yeah, if we if we marry Imag out to a member of the family, we're fine. This is the other problem. Trying to trying to play with three generations in mind, uh, which is something that I wouldn't usually have had to do. But uh, the point I was trying to make is that not alone does Muiraduk have a son, but he also has a daughter who is married out to a member of the same family. Now, they haven't had sons. It's the one aspect that I haven't enjoyed, is the succession due to the uh, the lack of tanistry. Show the lineage. He's already older than Amlib when he died. He's the same age as Cronon when he died. And we had Kuola living to 67. Uh, Quirked uh, to 63, so you can see that until Krahur, the more land that you had, the shorter your life. Uh, Kuola drank himself to death, died of old age, at 63. And again, look at the, the lifespans. Basically, he ruled for the same length of time as uh, Kuola and Cronon put together, and a couple of years more. Uh, 18 wars, a paragon of virtue, exalted among men. Oh, he was also, he was illustrious. How are we going to be getting into this? So I think uh, that was maybe um, when we declared war in Scotland, they chipped, they chipped a chunk off of us for being bold. So his fame actually suffered, but he is undoubtedly the most devoted the most religious of all of the High Kings to rule. It was an interesting playthrough. High King Kuala. Uh, fighting in a grand total of three offensive wars. Setting in motion the uh, expansion out from Down Patrick. His son Quirkta ruling for just 14 years. Uh, fighting in another few wars pushing down into the centre of the country. It was his son, Cronon, who was actually able to form the High Kingship, so neither of the two of these were High Kings. Uh, Cronon established the High Kingship, 
I think he was the first to actually play a role in affairs on the continent. Om Lieb, of course, building that fantastic money-making engine that we had. There was a, a reassessment of his career, of his regime, in recent years. And then the High King, Cronon, or uh, Krahur. Religious icon. Very happy with that. I've never gotten anyone to religious icon. I've never gotten anyone to, uh, to finish off an entire learning category. If I had achievements on, that would have been two achievements. I was thinking, when Wiraduk was still heir, I was thinking that we would, um, we would switch to Patrick anyway, after the, uh, the High King died. We can see there's Wales. I thought we might still see the old borders continue as High King Patrick. Now, the interesting thing, I don't know how this has happened, but somebody in Bosnia has become the head of the dynasty. I'm not too sure how that, um, that decision would be made. What makes you the head of the dynasty? House Dalfiathuk. Uh, here's the house head. The dynasty head. That might uh, swap back in a second. We'll see if that swaps when um, when we when we unpause. I'm not playing on. I'm just simply seeing what the first day of his life would have been like. We will go down the learning route. Um, he's finished off scholar. He's gone down theologian. We could try to reactivate or to um, to reset his perks. I think we'll go for medicine focus at the moment. And uh, we might very well reset his perks and just switch these across into whole of body. So if we went for five, that would get us to iron constitution, know thyself. We could go for these three and uh, and know thyself. There has been a big clearing out of the court, including that mayor that managed to get himself in as our marshal. So here is our father's personal champion and a hero of the defense in Ireland for Chancellor. I think it would be Corbin up in Alloc. And then for Steward, you're looking at Henri. So that uh, that keeps a lot of the vassals in check. Our sister will continue as our spy master. And what better way to bring this royal court run to an end than to hold a session of the court on the ascension of Patrick to the High Kingship of Ireland and the Kingship of Scotland. A commotion arises from the back of the court. Before anyone can grab him, a man rushes up to the throne. How do things like this happen? Uh, one of the things I didn't do was appoint a court physician, so we're not in a position to, uh, to have one. A lunatic has mistaken us for our father and has challenged us. Uh, we could have him thrown out. We could have him executed, or we could fight him. It's risky. I think we'll just throw him out. Uh, my vassal, Duchess Siobhan, and my chancellor, Earl Corbin, stand in front of me bickering as usual about the best politics for our country. War is the only way to make a country rich and powerful. It's served us well in the past. States Siobhan, only in peace can the country grow and prosper. I don't see, I don't see the High King as a, as a warlike figure. Not in the same way that his father was. Our people are proud warriors, not cowardly peasants. Uh, only peace can bring prosperity. It will increase the court grandeur. And we do what I decide. He is wrathful like his father. Only peace can bring prosperity. And I am faced with poor coin. Uh, my god, how many... What? So, Slee is the family of... Um, 
there's a couple of people of the the Slee name. So we uh, we recruited one of these to our court. Here is the guy we recruited to our court, and he's gone to the Isle of Man with that military engineer trait. Uh, High King, the boy has been at Emer's court with no one to watch over him since the death of his dear papa. We could raise the boy ourselves. Uh, we could find a home for him. He will become somebody's ward. Uh, Monad, or Gormul. A name that, um... That our... Uh, somebody our father dealt with. Do you know what? If he was learning, I would have nearly raised him myself. My hands are full. But... Uh, I will find him a home. And so his first day of sitting on the cold stone throne has come to an end. As the last petitioner departs, various courtiers follow them out of the room. My business here is done. And my business here on this playthrough is done. I said I would play through five generations. And what a five generations it was. We have restored the Dalfiathuk to their former glory and greatness. We have expanded not alone beyond Ulster, not alone... Uh, have we taken the High Kingship of Ireland? But we took Wales and after a couple of tries managed to secure Scotland. I had tremendous fun with this playthrough. I really thought with Amlieb it was just going to become a walkover. It was just going to be too easy. It was going to get boring. It would be upward trend after upward trend, success after success, victory after victory. Dear God! That derailed quickly. And again it was Scotland. It was the loss of Scotland. That uh, that caused it all. Scotland was a, a very interesting place. In this game. The High King did manage to, uh, to live a, a lengthy life. But really we only managed to secure Scotland in the end by the skin of our teeth. And then a, a massive liberty faction rising up against us. Hi, tremendous fun. I really enjoyed what the Royal Court DLC introduced for Ireland. I really enjo enjoyed the artifacts, uh, collecting artifacts, commissioning artifacts. I really enjoyed some of the artifacts that have been added by the uh, community flavor pack. And some of the uh, the events and the, uh, the clothing that's come from that and from the uh, ethnicities portraits pack. So there's been some really great work on those two mods. The uh, throne room looks a bit different because we've gone through a couple of different patches this game. So the walls were wallpapered at the start and then they became stone and then they were wallpapered again. But uh, I'm sure going forward that won't be uh, such a big deal. But I had tremendous fun with the artifacts. Did not look into culture as much as I should have. I don't want these playthroughs to become carbon copies of each other where it's conquer Ireland, conquer Scotland, conquer Wales. So I wasn't expecting to do any of that in these episodes. Uh, what I might do in future is start a bit later. So the first two generations we, we played as, they were enjoyable but there wasn't a lot happening. It's Ireland, you don't have a lot of opportunities to do much. So if we had started with Cronon, and if we were now going to continue to play on as Patrick, and then uh, his son, Krahur. I think those five generations would have been interesting. So it's something I might keep in mind for future. I was disappointed by the lack of Tanistry. It, it made it a much different game than I was expecting. Because with Tanistry, it is literally, I am the king, and I am going to try and just do whatever I can be the greatest ruler that I can because I have no idea who's going to rule after me. Whereas here we've had to deal with a couple of succession crises when uh, rulers didn't have sons. So it's the one thing that I want to see and anytime you hear me complaining about the game it's generally about areas that make the game make for a kind of a poor representation of Ireland. So this has been a very standard European type game in the in the way that the uh, the succession operated. But in general, I can't complain too much. Got to go on some crusades. 
get some crusader traits, get some members of my family killed. <clears throat> uh, we made some fantastic artifacts. Uh, Faith of Iberia, coming soon, we're going to see some big changes there, so I might be returning to see what Ireland is like when you have the Pope from day one, tribal Ireland, asking the Pope for money and raiding at the same time. It's going to be glorious. Thank you all for joining me in the series. Thank you all for uh, the comments that you left on Discord, the comments that you left on the videos. Thanks for all the, the likes and all the support. I hope you've enjoyed it. I had great fun. I had great fun reading all the comments and responding. And, yeah. I will see you all again in future.